just saw the state of me. I had this, I came in the house the other day and I had this, I don't know, I had like mud on my face or something like that. And my husband was like, oh, you got like this thing on your face. And I'd just been out about all day. I had this huge bit of mud on my face. And I just, I just don't ever look at myself in the mirror very much actually. And then I go and go on YouTube and I'm just like, wow, look at the state of my hair. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, hmm. Bit of a weird week, isn't it? Dave's here. She just jumped on my chair and knocked it over because that's what Dave does. And um, somebody was asking me uh, about, I, I, know, I mentioned in my last YouTube video how when I had anorexia, I had a very severe hoarding thing, um, which I attribute to, of course, I didn't know this at the time, but now I attribute it to what happens to the brain when the brain thinks that resources are scarce. And so you, the reduction in the food that you eat makes you go into energy deficit. And historically, and when I say historically, I mean evolutionary terms historically, um, energy deficit would have meant that resources were scarce, famine was scarce. And if, sorry, famine was scarce, famine was abundant, food was scarce. And if food was scarce, then, you know, if you, it's just this resource scarcity sort of mindset that your brain gets into. And then we start hoarding and things like that. And I was just horrific at hoarding. I didn't just hoard my safe foods, I did hoard my safe foods in ridiculous um, measures, but I, I hoarded everything like like plastic bags. I had this thing about plastic bags and I don't know what I thought that I would need all these plastic bags for, but I just kept them all. Like every time I, I bought something, which was, which was actually quite rare, I didn't buy things as much as I nicked them and scavenged them, but sometimes I did. And I'd even sort of buy an apple in the grocery store and take two plastic bags. And then I'd save the plastic bags. And for the life of me right now, I can't work out why. And if I used a Ziploc bag, I'd wash it out. And I then I'd, I'd like hang it out to dry on the kitchen tap. And I'd let it dry. And then I'd stash it in a drawer in case I ever needed to reuse it. Madness. And needless to say, now that I'm not in energy deficit and my brain is no longer in this place of resource guess. I don't have to, I don't do any of that it, I wouldn't even think to do it it wouldn't occur to me that's just how amazing the brain is that when your brain thinks it's in a certain environment it can become obsessive about certain things and then when it's no longer thinks it's in that environment it just goes away well a certain amount of rewiring required as well all right some questions Pamela says hi hi Pamela um, Liz says, what is your take on bodybuilders? Are they disordered or covering up an e eating disorder? A lot of the time they really are, in my opinion, the world according to me. Um, I think that eating disorders can take many shapes and forms. And I think that it's just so, ugh, it's so outdated the way that the typical you know, eating disorder is thought of as somebody that loses a lot of weight and becomes very skinny. And some of us do, but not everybody. And I see a lot of bodybuilders. I had a exercise obsession gym obsession and I see a lot of people who are bodybuilders and a lot of men women too who are bodybuilders exhibiting the exact same symptoms I did obsessed with the gym completely dependent on working out feel huge anxiety at the thought of not being able to work out often working out multiple times a day very very restrictive about the diet and that restriction can show up in different ways and it's a much more socially acceptable when that restriction is about orthorexia or um, obsession with a particular type of macronutrient. So somebody who's a bodybuilder is usually obsessed with protein and they're just eating white chicken or whatever it is and rice and vegetables and very structured meal times and very anxious if something might happen that would not allow them to eat in that very specific and structured way. It just sounds like an eating disorder to me. Oh, and there's usually a lot of binge and purge that goes on with people who are bodybuilding because they're they're restricting food heavily and then they can't do that forever and then the body takes over. And so the binge and purge is often there. They just don't talk about it as much. They just talk about how specific their diet is and how uh, well they are eating because they're eating to add muscle and, and things like that. But if you just look at the um, mental state and even just the symptoms, if you take a person's physical appearance out of it, look at the symptoms of their behavior and the mental state, is just the same as me when I had anorexia, just slightly different parameters. The goalposts have changed just a little bit. But it, yeah, sometimes even and not that much. 
it's sometimes it's uncanny how similar it is. It's just people can't see past physical appearance. So if people are so stereotyped brainwashed that people with eating disorders, people with anorexia are always in smaller bodies, they just can't see it when they are looking at somebody that's in uh, average size, normal, larger, whatever body, ripped body, they can't see an eating disorder because they're only looking for that physical super skinny symptom. All right. <sighs> Hi Tabs, how do you deal with rapid weight gain? This is Till Dragonfly. I felt my body's moving faster than my mind. It's making me want to go backwards because it's going so fast. You go back to shh, 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 shh. I trust my body. There's something that you had to brainwash yourself with if you want to succeed in recovery because your brain believes that you can't trust your body to manage your food and taking your weight. And so your brain's always going to have a problem with how your body gains weight, where it gains weight, how quickly it gains weight. Your brain's always going to have a problem with how much you want to eat, when you want to eat, blah, 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 blah. And those, those questions that your brain asks, those doubts that your brain has, are there because your actions over however many years that you've had your eating disorder or months have been actions of distrust in the body. Your body says, I'm hungry. You say, shut up, body. You shouldn't be hungry, so I'm not going to eat. That's an action of saying, I don't trust the body. And so that builds up and the brain starts to believe that you can't trust your body. And that's what's going on with you right now. Your body's gaining weight. That's a great thing. But your brain's going, oh, you can't trust that. That's too fast. No, no, no. Got to control it. I should have to micromanage that. And you shouldn't have to micromanage it. And in fact, if you do micromanage it, then you're not acting as if you trust your body. And therefore, you're reinforcing the belief system that you can't trust your body. So you got to pull yourself out of that. Whenever you see your brain doing that or feel your brain doing that, you got to pull yourself out of it and just brainwash yourself with, I trust my body. Even if you don't trust your body, you have to brainwash yourself with, I trust my body, so that your brain might start to believe that you do trust your body. And more importantly than the brainwashing words, uh, the actions. You have to act as if you trust your body. Your brain watches actions. And if you are acting as if you don't trust your body, your brain's not going to start to believe that you can trust your body. And those doubting thoughts are going to keep on coming, coming, coming. Act as if you trust your body. Even if you don't trust your body, act as if you trust your body. Okie dokie. I'm glad to say I finally got tired of Nutella. Oh, actually, a friend bought me. They went to Italy but a while ago. Well, actually, they shouldn't say that, should I? But she bought me from Italy, like, this lint Nutella. I mean, I've been eating it and I'm fine. It didn't even occur to me that it might be infected with the virus. I was like, it's chocolate. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> I, only just, I only just thought that had not even occurred to me at all that I'm eating, um, I'm eating Italian food that's just kind of just come off the plane a week ago. But, I mean, what am I going to do? It's like lint version Nutella, lint chocolate Nutella. I'm not going to not eat it, am I? All right. Um... <sighs> Roxana, this is the last question I'm going to answer. Roxana says, how do I stop getting angry at my close ones now that they're in charge of my food intake due to treatment? So you've got to understand where, where does that anger come from? And believe you me, I suffered from this big time. Would fly off the handle if anybody looked at me the wrong way. If my mother even looked at me as if she might be thinking that I need to eat more food, freak the fuck out. And the reason I freak out is because I knew she was right. I knew she, she that I did want to eat more food. And that just threatened right my eating disorder. Bloody mothers always threatening us. So the brain feels really angry. You go into fight or flight, fight, flight, or freeze. All of us, when, when we go into our sympathetic nervous system, it's fight, flight, or freeze. Those are the options. I often went into fight just because that's the type of person I am. A lot of people go into freeze just don't do anything. And some people go into flight. They're like, I'm the fuck out of here, mom. So you got to look at this like, oh, well, the fact is the reason that there's, what's going on here is I'm going into my sympathetic nervous system when somebody pressures me to eat more food. That means that my brain is perceiving more food or perceiving the weight gain that might come as a result of more food as a threat. So then we've got to look at, oh, so the actual problem is, is that my brain perceives more food as a threat. Therefore, I need to teach my brain, I need to train my brain that more food and the weight gain associated with more food is not a threat. And how do we train the brain that we are not afraid of weight gain? We eat the fucking food. So 
that but that's kind of what the first thing that you have to do is you have to be able to notice when you're going into your sympathetic nervous system you've got to start to notice when you're freaking out a little bit and then you've got to put the brakes on it and i know that's fucking difficult because the whole point of that nervous system is for us not to put the brakes on it because that nervous system is designed to help you run away from bears so if you think about it we we're, we're not supposed to override that because otherwise we get eaten by the bears but just because we're not supposed to override it and just because it's bloody difficult to override it doesn't mean that we can't override it. It just means it takes a little bit of prep. So you've got to prep yourself for this. Be on the lookout. Start to know the signs when you are going into your sympathetic nervous system, your heart rate will go, you start to feel fighty and angry and you'll probably start to argue with people. That was the key one for me. I start to argue with people. So what I had to do was when I noticed I was starting to argue with people, I had to be like, stop, Tad, stop shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down and eat the fucking food. That's how I talk to myself because that's just how I talk to myself. You might talk to yourself in a more compassionate way, like please sit down and please eat the food. But that's just how I talk to myself. And it works. It gets me to do stuff. What can I say? So whatever the signs are for you that you are going into fighty, fighty mode, you've got to then pull it back and breathe. And then once you breathe, then you're, you're going to shift back into your parasympathetic nervous system. It's the rest and digest one. That's the logical thinking, thinking, not an idiot one. And then you'll be able to be like, oh, yes, I know what I should do in this situation. I should shut up and eat the fucking food. And you'll have a much better chance of being able to do that if you're in your parasympathetic nervous system. Step one is getting yourself out of your sympathetic nervous system into your parasympathetic nervous system because good luck trying to be anything other than an illogical asshole when you are in your sympathetic nervous system. I never was able to. I was always an illogical asshole when I was in my sympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system, less of an asshole. So then I have more chance of being able to actually <sighs> shut up and eat the food. And if I was successful in that, you can all be successful in that as well. So, yes, that's it for today. Tips on how to not be an illogical fucking asshole when it comes to food. Bye.